recording ayon okay so let's uh finalize the semester by discussing chapter eight which is on alcohol slang so again alcohol slang yung ko cover natin na so yeah so wala na tayong ethers wala na rin tayong thiols na so we'll we'll just focus on alcohols kasi ito yung mga important molecules sa ngayon na so uh Ano yung mga alcohols na alam natin in daily life? Mga na-experience natin or mga nababalitaan natin in daily life? Obviously, ang unang sagot dapat ninyo sa alcohol ay yung isopropyl alcohol. So, sila yung mga nasa bote ng alcohol natin. So, isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol, ito ay molecule, uh, ito ay may mga molecules na may alcohol groups na. Ano pa? Ang um, kunare, malapit na magpasko, so most likely may mag-iinom sa inyo ng alak-alak, no? Okay, so normal lang 'yan, okay lang 'yan. Um, yung and yung mga alcoholic beverages, may alcohol din doon. Anong alcohol to be exact, uh, to be specific? Ang alcohol na nandoon ay ethanol. Okay, so ethanol ay It's an alcohol molecule that has two carbon atoms from the word eth, ethane. No? So, two carbon atoms yung alcohol na yun. Tapos, um, kung naalala nyo pa, last year, last year ba yun? O last, last year pa ata. Around 2018-2019. No? Balita sa TV na maraming namatay dahil sa lambanog. No? Hindi naman yung lambanog mismo, yung methanol na nasa lambanog. Okay. So, yan. Yung methanol na nasa lambanog that caused um, death no, sa ibang mga tao. Bakit? Kasi ang, lam- ang methanol, kapag tumalsik yan sa eyes nyo, delikado yun. Pwede kayo mabulag agad-agad. No? Kasi, ayan, ganun talaga yung behavior ng ethanol. Eh. Unlike yung ano, isopropanol, Diba kapag natalsikan ka na ito sa mata, maghahap day lang, tapos okay na uli. Yung methanol, hindi. No? Pwede makakos yan ng pagkabulag. Kaya nung OJT ko, hindi ko hindi ako pumunta dun sa research. Research kasi yung OJT ko eh. Sa Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. So, yun. So, ayaw ko dun sa may methanol. Kasi nga, malabo na nga mata ko. Mabubulag pa ako. Wala na ako nakita, di ba? Kaya, yun. So, dun na lang ako sa ano, polymers. Yung naging thesis ko rin. Okay. So, yun. Um, ano mapansin nyo sa mga ex- ano ko, examples natin na alcohol? Ay, even yung phenol, yun na-discuss natin last time. Yung mga nasa skincare product natin, alcohol din yun. Ano mapapansin nyo sa pangalan nila? Lahat sila may all sa dulo. Methanol, ethanol, isopropanol, phenol. No? So lahat na may mga all sa dulo, we are pertaining to molecules na alcohol ang, ano, ang kanyang category. Ngayon, ano yung meron sa mga alcohols? No? What makes alcohol different to other organic molecules? No? When we say alcohol sa org chem, we are pertaining to molecules that possesses hydroxyl functional group or hydroxyl substituent. Okay? So, basta may OH, yun ay alcohol. OH lang. So, ganun. Uh, may mga alcohol tayo na hindi obvious, pero alcohol yung kanilang functional groups. No? For example, yung asukal. Okay? So, kung nakakita na kayo ng molecule ng asukal, bigyan ko kayo ng example. Uh, let's say glucose. Kikita nyo naman, di ba? Tignan nyo yung glucose. Ano yung meron dyan? Puro OH. So, yung glucose, yan ay parang alcohol lang din. No? Kapag finerment mo yung glucose, magiging ethanol yan. Alcohol talaga yan. Ha? So, yan. Yung glucose, sucrose, fructose, at iba pang mga osos na mga ating carbohydrates, may mga OH sila. No? So, pwede sila maging alcohol kapag nag-fermentation tayo. Okay? Kasi meron sila na OH. No? Basta may OH, alcohol ang tawag sa kanila. Okay? So, the simplest alcohol sa organic chemistry would be methanol. No? And methanol can be derived from wood. No? Pwede yan makuha sa kahoy. No? 
So, upon degradation of wood, pwede lumabas yung mga methanol substances na. That's why we also call methanol, uh, that's why we also call methanol the wood alcohol. Okay? So, kaya, siya, kaya kasi siya gawin using wood lang. Madali lang siya isynthesize. Na. Madali lang siya padamihin sa laboratory. Okay? So, yun. And then, by just adding some carbon atoms, you can extend your molecules. No? Pwede kang magagawa ng ethanol, propanol, isopropanol, at iba pa. And then, later on, pwede na yan makaproduce ng mga lipids. No? So, yung alcohol, i-extend mo pa nang i-extend yan, pwede yung maging lipids, no? yung mga fats. No? Okay. So, before we go there, punta muna tayo sa nomenclature ng alcohol. No? Kasi alam natin yung alcohol, may OH siyang substituent. Ngayon, paano natin papangalanan yung molecule mismo? Okay. The nomenclature for alcohols is no different to that of the alkane. Parehas lang halos. No? Where there were just some few uh, modifications sa pangalan. Okay. So, paano yung similarity nila? O, ganito. Diba, sa alkanes, ang ginagawa natin, we look for the longest chain. Diba? Ganun yan. Sa alkene, ganun din. We look for the longest chain, but this time, kailangan may double bond yon, o kaya triple bond. For alcohols, medyo ganun din gagawin natin. Okay? So, you look for the longest chain in which may OH na nakabit dapat. May nakakabit dapat na OH dun sa longest chain mo. Okay? So, hindi siya necessarily yung pinakamahaba talaga, no? Yung pinakamahaba dapat na may OH. Okay? So, yun. So, ganun gagawin natin dito. You check kung sino mahaba na chain. Hanapin mo yung OH. Kailangan kasama yun doon. Okay? So, yun yung parent chain mo. Then, everything that is attached to that parent chain will be called your substituents. Okay? So, ganun lang. Then, ano gagawin natin? You count the carbon atoms in that long chain that contains the OH substituent. Well, let's say, kunwari, 5 carbons yan. So, ano pangalan kapag 5 carbons? Pentane. Pag 6 carbon, hexane, di ba? So, ganun pa rin naman dito. So, bilangin mo kung ilang carbon atoms yun nasa long chain mo. However, instead of naming it, ano, naming it as, ano, heptane, butane, propane, yung isa dulo, yung isa dulo, papalitan mo siya ng all. So, lahat ng E, papalitan mo ng all. Ano, kapag may OH na substituent. Okay? So, ganun. So, bali yung mangyayari. Kunwari, yung propane mo may OH. Ano pangalan nun? Propanol. Okay? Kunwari, e ethane. May OH yon Ethanol. Ethanol. Propanol. Butanol. Uh, pentanol. Hexanol. Na. So, lahat ng E sa dulo, papalitan mo ng O. All pala. All. Okay? And then, what else? No? It is also necessary for you to indicate kung nasaan ang OH. No? Kasi sabi nga natin last time, may isomerism, di ba? Ibig sabihin nun, yung ating substituent, pag nilipat mo sa ibang position, mag-iiba yung name niya. Okay? So, ganun din dito sa alcohols. No? Depending on the position of your OH, you can have different names. So, to differentiate one molecule over the other, kailangan ilagay mo yung locants. Paano tayo maglalagay ng numbers? Paano tayo maglalagay ng locants? Ganito po. Kailangan yung OH, siya yung may lowest number. So, we will assign locants no? first doon sa mas malapit sa OH. No? Kailangan doon muna sa OH, banda tayo maglalagay ng locants. So, 1, 2, 3, so on, so forth na. No? So, hindi pa din sa malayo sa OH, no? Kasi, again, our priority now is the OH. So, siya yung bibigyan natin ng unang uh, importansya, no? Siya yung bibigyan mo ng unang lowest number as much as possible. Okay? For cyclic alcohols naman, no? Ibig sabihin, cycli cycloalkanes, for example, kunwari, cyclohexane, cyclopropane, Kapag yun ay may OH na substituent, yung E, papalitan mo ng all pa rin. So, cyclopropanol, cyclohexanol, etc. Kapag ikaw ay may iba pang substituent sa cyclic alcohols mo, nari may methyl, 
syempre, anong ginagawa natin doon? Nag-a-assign tayo ng numbers ulit, di ba? Naglo-low count tayo. So, ganun din dito. No? Kung sa straight chain, no? kung sa straight chain, ang lowest number ay na kay OH, sa cyclic, ganun din. The lowest number must be given to the OH pa rin. Okay? So, 1 yung OH parate. Okay? For cyclo, uh, cyclic alcohols. And then, yung ibang substituent, kaya na bahala magpangalan doon. Okay? So, our rules sa alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, benzene, they still apply here na yung sa naming ng substituents. Okay? So, tingin tayo ng ibang examples. Medyo marami tayong ano, sasagutan ngayong araw. Pero kaya yan in 2 hours na. Okay. So, here are some few examples. So, we have the following alcohol molecules and their respective IUPAC names. No? So, for example, here we have ethanol. Okay. Paano naging ethanol yan? Bilangin mo kung ilang carbon yan. Dalawa. Okay. So, ito. Isa. Yan, isa. Ito, pangalawa. So, you have two um, carbon atoms there. No? So, dalawang carbon atoms yan. So, ano yung prefix na gagamitin? Eth, no? So, ethane yan. No? However, since we have an OH substituent, yung E sa dulo, gagawin mong all. So, from ethane, magiging ethanol. No? So, yan. Pag mag-a-assign tayo ng numbers, we always begin doon sa part ng molecule that is nearest to your OH. No? So, doon tayo mag-start parate doon sa malapit sa OH. So, we have here 1 ethanol. Pero bakit walang 1 dyan sa pangalan niya? Kasi ganito. Uh, if I place my OH here sa left side, ano yung magiging pangalan niya? 1 ethanol pa rin. Okay? So, regardless of the position ng OH mo, whether nasa left yan or nasa right yan, its locant will be always 1. Okay? So, hindi mo na kailangan isulat yung number kapag ganun. Pag kahit saan mo siya ilagay, number 1 talaga siya. Kahit di mo nasabihin yung 1 ethanol. Okay? So, okay na yung ano, ethanol na lang. So, ganun lang. So, let's have these two examples pa. So, we have here the isomers of propanol. So, we have 1 propanol and 2 propanol. No? So, propanol yan. Bakit? Kasi prop meaning may tatlong carbons. No? So, let's count dun banda sa may OH. So, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, we have 3 carbons. So, we will use propanol. No? Propane. No? Then, may OH yan. Yung E sa dulo ng propane gagawing all. Propanol. Tapos, ano pa sabi natin? Your substituents can be placed in different carbon positions. Na? Pwede nga sa 1, na sa 2, na? for this case. Na? So, ano pwede natin gawin? Kapag yung OH mo nasa first carbon, papangalanan mo siyang 1 propanol. That means, sa yung propane na alcohol, yung OH part nun nasa carbon 1. Ito naman, this is the isopropyl alcohol or the 2 propanol. So, yung OH mo nasa second carbon. Uh, by the way, yung mga common name dito, hindi masyado obvious eh. Okay. Pero kung titignan nyo maigi, isopropyl pa rin yan kasi may pa-letter V siya. Okay? So, may pa-letter V, so isopropyl alcohol. Although, we're good with IUPAC names. Okay na tayo dyan sa IUPAC na lang para mas madali maintindihan natin. Okay? So, ganun lang. Um, kailan tayo mag-start mag-assign ng locants, no? yung mga numbers? You can start assigning your locants kapag ang carbon chain mo ay 3 pataas. No? For example, ito, tatlo na yung carbons mo. Magdong ka na mag-start mag-assign ng locants. No? Pero kapag dalawa or isang carbon lang yan, kahit di na. Okay? So, here are some few examples pa. We have here 1 butanol. So, 4 carbon chain yan. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, ay, but 4 agad. So, that's 1 butanol. Yung OH mo na sa first carbon. And then, we have a 4 carbon chain. So, from butane, magiging butanol. Uh, next one, we have 2 butanol. Which is also called the sec butanol. Okay. 
So, yung OH mo, instead na sa carbon 1, nandun siya sa carbon 2. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, hindi ganun ka-obvious yung ano dito. Hindi ganun ka-obvious yung shortcuts natin. No? So, ba sabi natin, kapag sec, parang cloyan, di ba? Ito, may chlorine naman dito. Hindi lang obvious. Let me redraw the structure. Ganito kasi itsura niya. So, ito yung sec butyl. Itong paletter C na yan. Are, ito, i-flip mo yan dito sa baba. Yung paletter C na mabubuo dyan, yun yung clo. No? Pero hindi siya ganun ka-obvious, kaya nga sabi ko, yung mga ganitong ano, common name, kahit hindi na natin gamitin no? para mas madali ang buhay. So this one is 2-methyl-1-propanol naman. No? How come? Okay, so sabi natin, you look for the longest chain that contains the OH substituent. So ito yon. That is the longest chain that contains the OH substituent. You assign the lowest number to the carbon na may OH. Na dun banda sa may OH. So, dito yung 1, dito yung 2, dito yung 3. So, the parent name natin, yung parent name natin ay 1-propanol. Okay? So, on the first carbon, andun yung OH. Na. On the first carbon, andun yung OH. So, this is 1-propanol. Ngayon, yung substituent, huwag nyo kalimutan. Okay? So, on the second carbon, you have a methyl substituent. So, we will call it, uh, we will name it 2-methyl-1-propanol. No? Or, it is also called isobutanol. Pero, again, yung common name dito, hindi na masyadong obvious. No? Hindi ko na siya nakikita eh. For the isobutyl no? substituent. Pero, ganun yung idea. No? Uh, so, mapapansin nyo, yung naming ay parang hydrocarbons lang talaga. No? May added, ano lang, added stuff. No? Pampasa yun ng buhay. So, let's have this example. Now, we have the third butyl alcohol. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung third butyl, iconic yan. Pag may nakita kang ganyan, third butyl agad yan. Okay? So, matik yun. Uh, sabi nga ng classes ko kanina pang lait din yung ano pang lait din yung third butyl uh, sabi mo mukha kang paa ng manok mukha kang third butyl di ba tayo tayo lang magkakaintindihan ng alalang last class na rin namin kanina eh ayan nakakamiss din <laughs> okay so ito so ito third butyl yan basta may ganyang itsura may paa ng manok third butyl yan Okay. So the com the IUPAC name for this molecule is 2 methyl 2 propanol. How come? Paano nangyari 'yon? So sabi ko, you look for the longest carbon chain in which your OH is a substituent, no? So ito 'yon. Hindi man obvious pero ayan 'yon. The longest chain na may OH substituent. So, ito yung carbon 1, ito yung carbon 2, 'yun yung carbon 3. Okay? Naka-side view lang yung molecule pero ganyan 'yan, no? So, we have a three-carbon chain here. So, that's propane. Okay? On the second carbon, you have your OH. So, that's two, propanol. Also, on the second carbon, you have a methyl substituent. No? So, may methyl substituent ka. So, that's two methyl, two propanol, a.k.a. the third butyl alcohol. Okay? So, next one, if we have a cyclic alcohol, such as this compound, uh, sabi natin, yung OH, it will bear the locant 1 parate. No? So, it is not necessary na hindi na kailangan no? na bigyan mo siya ng locant, yung OH. Huwag nyo na sabihin na 1 cyclohexanol. Kasi regardless of its position in the ring, no? so regardless of position nyo dyan sa paligid, 1 pa rin siya. Okay? So, hindi magbabago ang kanyang locant. So, one, ano na lang yan, cyclohexanol. Paano po kapag may substituent yan? Let's suppose I have a methyl substituent here. Uh, Mag-assign ka na ng locant, 1, 2. On the second carbon, you have your methyl. So, that will be 2-methyl plus your name ng parent chain, cyclohexanol. Okay, so ganyan na lang yan. 2-methyl-cyclohexanol. Bakit hindi na 2-methyl-1-cyclohexanol? Kasi, 
yung OH, automatically, number 1 yan. Na? So, kahit hindi mo na siya ilagay, understood na yon Minsan nilalagay nila, minsan hindi. Pero, ang idea, kahit hindi mo na siya ilagay, ayos lang. Okay? Kasi, always number 1, COH. So, ganun lang na. Yan yung nomenclature ng ating alcohol. Marami pa tayong examples later. Practice muna tayo. Uh, let's write the IAPAC name for the following alcohols. So, we have this one. Ang pangalan niya. So, rule number one, you always have to look for the longest chain that contains the OH as your substituent. So, ito yon. So, this is your parent chain, the longest chain that contains the OH substituent. Then, ano sunod? You assign locants, no? So, saan ka maglalagay ng locant? Doon banda sa may OH, no? So, hindi ka mag-start sa, ano, hindi ka mag-start sa left side. Ang layo ng OH doon, eh. Dito ako sa right side, mag-start, mag-number. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, may parent chain is a 5-carbon chain. On the second carbon, andun yung OH. So, anong pangalan nun? 2, pentanol. Okay. So, ang pangalan niya ay 2-pentanol. Ano pa kulang? Yung methyl substituent. Okay? So, yung methyl substituent ko, as a fourth carbon, so that will be named 4-methyl-2-pentanol. So, yan yung complete name niya. 4-methyl-2-pentanol. Kung ano yung rules sa alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, ganun din yung rule dito. Okay? So, wala naman managbago masyado. So, ito naman, letter C. So, we have this chain. Hanapin ang parent chain. So, wag nyo na hanapin yung parent chain because the molecule itself is the parent chain. Okay? So, ngayon, mag a na lang tayo ng locants. mag a tayo ng numbers. So, where will we start? Doon banda sa may OH. No? So, in this case, sa left. No? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is a 7-carbon chain. So, since my OH yan, yan ay hepta, uh, heptanol. No? heptanol. Nasaan yung OH? Nasa 2nd carbon. So, ang pangalan yan ay 2-heptanol. So, yan yung pangalan niya. Ganun lang. Ito naman, letter B. So, we have this thing. Oh, ano naalala nyo dito? Hinanakit. Hindi. Ano? Ang naalala natin dito ay yung mga solid and dashed wedges. No? So, ano ulit meaning kapag solid that is pointing towards you? Pointing towards your face yan. So, itong OH nakatutok to sa mukha ko. No? Yung dashes, yun yung nasa likod ng screen. Okay? So, itong OH nasa front ng screen, nasa harap ko. Yung dashes, nasa likod yan ng screen. Okay? So, yan. So, depending on the type of your wedges, pwede kang magkaroon ng cis and trans isomerism. Ano yung cis? ba diba sabi natin kapag cis, ano? Parehas sila nakapoint sa isang direction. So, they could be both dashed, no? Pwede rin both solid wedge, no? So, pwede parehas silang ganito. Pwede silang parehas na ganito. Cis yun. Kasi kapag cis, same side. Okay? Pag trans yan, ano yung trans? Yung isa naka-solid, yung isa naka-dash. No? So, magkaibang directions. No? Kagaya nga ng logic natin, transit. Pag transit, hindi yan one way. Two way yan. Northbound, southbound, westbound, eastbound, no? Puntang Divisoria, papuntang Santa Lucia, na hindi pa rin bukas until now, no? So, ganun. So, ganun yung mangyayari. Kapag trans, two directions. One is pointing upwards, the other is pointing downwards, no? So, isang solid, isang dash. So, for this case, in our example here, siya ay trans, no? Kasi yung isa ay upward, yung isa ay pointing downwards. So, trans yan.
Uh, mamaya na natin include yan. So, bago tayo pumunta doon, um, pangalan na muna natin yung molecule assuming na walang cis and trans isomerism. Paano natin papangalanan yan? So, of course, this is a cyclic alcohol. So, number one, COH, followed by the other substituent. So, ano pangalan yan? So, that will be 2-methyl 1 Ay, hindi. Hindi mo na pala kailangan isulat yung 1. Okay. Bakit hindi mo na kailangan isulat yung 1? Kasi kapag cyclohexanol, ang OH ay parating 1. Okay? So, that's 2-methyl cyclohexanol na. Okay? So, yan ang complete name niya. 2-methyl cyclohexanol. Okay? So, again, yung OH, wag mo na isulat yung 1. Okay, so that's 2-methyl cyclohexanol. Ano pa kulang natin dito? Yung isomerism. Sabi natin, ito ay trans. No? So you have to indicate that. Saan nilalagay yung trans? Yung cis sa harap. Sulat mo, trans dash yung pangalan. Okay? So ganun. Ganun lang. Okay? So always, yung cis, yung trans, nasa harap. Yung E, yung Z, magkaewalay, magkazama sa alkenes, nasa harap lang din. Okay. Then let's have this one, uh, letter D. Hanapin ng longest chain containing the OH substituent. So, ito yon. Ayan. So, start time mag-count. Dun sa carbon, you rest to your OH. So, this is 1, 2, 3. Okay. On the first carbon, ando yung OH. So, ang pangalan niyan? 1-propanol. Okay? So, siya si 1-propanol. On the second carbon, may dalawa kang methyl. So, that will be 2,2-dimethyl 1-propanol. Okay? So, yan lang. So, that's how we name alcohols na. Mamaya, marami pa tayong example. Don't worry. Okay? Ah, ito yung sagot na. Okay. So, ito yung sagot. 4-methyl-2-pentanol, 2-heptanol, trans-2-methyl-cyclohexanol, 2-2-dimethyl-1-propanol. Kunwari, di ko alam, pero alam ko naman talaga. <laughs> okay, so tama naman yung naming natin. Okay? So, ganun lang. Easy lang. Na. Minsan naman, yung ating alcohols, pwede siyang may two or more OHS. Na. So, ang tawag natin sa mga molecules na ganun ay glycols. Na. Okay? So, yan. If dalawa yung OH mo, glycol. If three above, mga glycerol, etc. No? So, paano natin papangalanan sila? Okay? Di ba, kapag tayo nagpapangalan ng multiple substituents, kunwari, may apat na methyl doon. Paano natin pinapangalanan yun? Hindi naman yun methyl, 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 methyl. Hindi ganun, di ba? Ginagawa natin, we use Greek prefixes to indicate the number of that substituent, di ba? So, kunwari, apat na methyl. So, we say tetramethyl instead of methyl, 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 methyl. No? So, ganun. So, for hydroxides, ganun din gagawin natin. For OHS. No? Kapag isa yung OH mo, all lang yon, Okay? Kapag dalawa na yung OH mo, di all. Okay? So, hindi mo siya paghihiwalayin. Isang all, tas isa pang all. Hindi ganun. So, sasabihin mo, di all. Pag tatlo yung, tatlo yung OH, try all. Pag apat, tetrol. Pag marami, et cetera. No? So, kaya na bahala kung anong Greek prefix yung kailangan niya gamitin. Okay? However, di ba kanina, kapag isa yung OH, yung E, binubura natin. We change that to all. No? Pag ano naman yan, more than one na OH, let's say dalawa or tatlong OH yan, we retain the E. So, hindi na binubura yung E. Ang ginagawa natin, dinudugtong na lang natin yung diol, triol, etc. No? So, dinudugtong na lang natin yan sa dulo. 
And of course, you also have, you, sh- you still have to indicate asan yung mga all, asan yung mga OHS. Okay, so ganun lang. So let's look at some few examples here. So here we have 1, 2, ethane, diol. Okay, so analyze natin yung name. Ethane, kasi may dalawang carbon. Again, observe that yung E ay hindi na tinanggal. Kailan tatanggalin ng E kapag isa lang yung OH? Pero kapag dalawa or higit pa, hindi na. Danes na. So, yan. so, siya ay ethane kasi may dalawang carbon. Diol kasi may dalawang OH. Asan yung dalawang OH? Nasa carbon 1 and 2. So, ang kanyang pangalan ay 1,2-ethane-diol or ethylene glycol. Saan ginagamit ang ethylene glycol? Ethylene glycol is one of the uh, components of your car radiator. Oh, Nari, may sasakyan kayo. Sasakyan ng parents nyo. Kaya sasakyan ng kapitbahay. Basta sasakyan. Sa harap nun, di ba pag gumagana yung sasakyan, ang init sa harap, di ba? Bandang plate number. Tapos bandang ilaw. May mainit na buga dun sa harap. Ang reason ko ba't may ganun doon is yung radiator. No? So, yung radiator that helps to lower the temperature of your car engine. Kasi nangyayaring combustion reaction doon. Sinusunog yung gasolina doon. So, mainit yon. Kapag hindi natanggal yung heat doon sa engine, mag-overheat yung sasakyan, titirik yan. Nangyayari yan sa amin. No? Kapakit kami ng bundok, tapos biglang tumirik. Okay. Matuwa nga ka muna <laughs> until umukay na yun sa sakyan. No? So, gano'n yung mangyayari. No? Kapag hindi mo na-remove yung heat sa sasakyan, titirik yan. So, ano yung purpose ng radiator? Parang ref lang yan. Di ba sa ref, meron sa likod na grills doon. Radiator tawag doon. So, ang purpose ng radiator doon is to move the heat from the engine away from away sa engine, no? away from the engine. Ganun din sa ref, no? So, yung nasa likod nun, may nagpo-flow dong chemicals, no? Freon, no? May nagpo-flow dong refrigerants, no? So, huwag nyo bubutasin yun, ha? May maglilik dong gasol, ano, hangin, or liquids, no? Yung na-discuss natin sa alkanes, no? Mga chlorofluorocarbons, andun yun. Okay? So, ganun, uh, yung heat sa loob ng ref, nilalabas papunta sa likod, no? So, as a result, lumalamig yung loob ng ref, no? Kasi nalilipat yung heat. Okay? So, ganun yun sa car, no? Yung init ng engine, nalilipat siya palabas sa sasakyan by the help of the radiator, no? So, yung mga thermodynamics stuff, no? Masaya yun. Pag, ano, mga chemka or mekeng, yun yung gagawin nyo. Okay? So, yun, ang ethylene glycol, that is one of the component, no? isa yun sa mga chemicals na nilalagay sa ano, radiator ng sasakyan. No? Bakit? Kasi ang boiling point niya ay mas mataas kaysa sa tubig. Ang tubig kasi ay 100 degrees Celsius lang. Ang ethylene glycol, uh, 120 above ata yan. So, hindi siya agad mag-evaporate. No? Hindi siya agad... Ano, so, so, hindi siya mag-evaporate agad. No? So, ibig sabihin, it is more efficient in uh, moving heat no? from one source to the other. Uh, share ko lang. Okay. So, next one, we have this two here. So, 1,2-propane diol and 1,2,3-propane triol. No? So, propane yan because we have three carbons. Diol to kasi may dalawang OHS on the first and on the second carbon. So, 1,2-propane diol. And then we have here 1,2,3-propane triol. So, 1,2,3. This is 1,2,3. Two, Ito yung propane. Ito yung tatlong ol. We also called 1,2,3-propane triol as glycerol, glycerin, pwede rin glycerol, pwede rin gly- glycerin. Okay, uh, depende na yun sa tao, na. Pero kami nasanay kami yung glycerol, eh. No? Okay, or glycerin, no? So, sana, sana nakikita yung glycerin or yung mga glycerol, no? So, isa yan sa mga thickener, pampakapal ng, ano, pampakapal ng liquids, na. 
So minsan meron 'yan sa shampoo, minsan meron 'yan sa pagkain, no? Mga food grade na stuff, no? Meron 'yan sa pagkain at minsan meron 'yan sa katawan ninyo, no? Saan natin makikita yung mga glycerol, si mga glycerin? Minsan pala nasa bomba din 'yan. Parang nasa bomba din 'yung ginagamit din 'yan sa bomba. Anyway, so 'yun nga. Um uh, yung ating mga glycerols, 'yan ay nasa katawan natin, no? Kung maaalala ninyo sa ating biology, yung cell, 'di ba may cell membrane doon that separates the outer world and the cytoplasm, 'di ba? So yung cell membrane na 'yon, ano meron doon? Letter L, lipid bilayer, no? So ang lipid bilayer, ganito itsura noon, no? May mga nakapaganyan, parang mga spaghetti noodles, no? So may mga nakapaganyan. No? Okay? Tapos yung mga yan, connected sila. So ganito yung mga lipid bilayers natin, no? So yan yung nasa cell membrane, no? So kung isa-zoom in nyo yan, which is di ko na magawa, Etong ano, basic structure ng lipid ay may glycerol, ha? So basically, ang ginagawa lang ng katawan natin, we have glycerol na talaga, okay? So we have this glycerol chain here, as yung oxygen. Ang gagawin na lang ng body natin ay palitan yung H ng ibang atoms. Pwedeng ano, 16 carbons 'yan, pwedeng 10 carbons, pwedeng ano, 14 carbons, no? So, pag dinugtungan niya ng ibang atoms, tawag na dyan ay lipids, no? Yan na yung mga taba-taba, no? Yan yung mga nasa skin cells natin, ano pa? Basta, mga nasa cell membrane, no? So, yun. So, tawag sa kanila ay mga lipids na. So, ano yung basic structure ng lipid? May glycerol. So, madidiscuss yan further sa inyong ano, biochemistry next year, no? Basta ganun. Masaya yung biochem, no? dami mong kakabisaduhin. Mas may iyak ka na lang. Ganun. Okay? So, yun lang. Uh, hindi rin pala siya, ano, no? Hindi rin pala uh, limited yan sa lipids, no? Although lipids din naman yung mga, ano, neurotransmitters, no? Mga uh, fluids sa ating, sa, ano, spinal, ano, spinal membranes, no? mga sphingomyelin, no? So, yan. May mga ganitong structure din yan. Sphingomyelin, basically, glycerol lang yon. Palitan mo lang yung mga atoms dito. You have your sphingomyelin. Okay. Nasa nervous system yan. So, ganun. ba? Diba? So, ganun lang. So, again, paano mag-name ng alcohols? In-naming alcohols, you still follow the same rule as your alkanes. Gagawin mo kapag isang OH, yung E, papalitan mo ng all. No? Then you have to assign kung ano yung locant ng OH. If you have any other substituent, name them as is. No? Tapos, kapag yan ay cyclo, for example, cyclo, hindi mo na kailangan sabihin na one cyclohexanol because always ang OH ay carbon number one. Okay. Then, kapag multiple OHs ang meron ka, you have diols, triols, etc. <laughs> so, yan. So, ang pag-name na to, yung E sa dulo, hindi mo na papalitan. You retain it. Hayaan mo lang yung E. Lalagyan mo na lang ng diol, triol, depending on the number of your OH substituents. So, uh, Nasa kalagitnaan na tayo, malapit na tayo, matapos. No? Anyway, so let's continue na. Uh, Mag-naming na tayo. No? So let's try to name the following compounds. And yan, bigyan natin sila ng IUPAC name. Then identify the type of alcohol. Uh, punta muna tayo sa type ng alcohol. No? Pag sinabing type of alcohol, we can have a primary, secondary, or tertiary. No? Kung naalala nyo pa, na-discuss natin yan before. No? Pag sinabing primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, tertiary alcohol, ano meaning nun? Ganito. Let's have this example. No? Sample molecule dito. So, itong ano, triol natin na to. 
merong primary, merong secondary, meron ding tertiary alcohol dyan. Paano natin malalaman na ganito? Tignan nyo yung carbon na dinudugtungan nila. Okay? So, lagyan natin sila ng highlights. So, itong OH na to, nakadugtong yan dito sa pink. Itong OH na to, nakadugtong sila dito sa fancy color na yan. Gawin ko na lang green. Fancy, fancy. Ayan. So, itong OH na to, nakadugtong yan dito na lang sa black na carbon. Okay? So, ayan. Ang gagawin nyo is ganito. Tingnan nyo yung OH, kung saan sila nakadugtong. So, ito yon yung mga carbon na yan. Ang task ninyo para malaman nyo kung yan ay primary, secondary, or tertiary is ganito. ba diba, ito yung carbon na focus tayo. Tingnan mo yung katabi nun. Ilang carbon yung katabi niya? So, ito yung carbon na to, ilang carbon yung katabi niya? Isa lang. So, yung ibang katabi niya, hydrogens na, pati yung OH na. So, ibig sabihin nun, pag isang carbon lang yung katabi niya, yan ay primary. Okay? Pag isang carbon lang ang katabi ng carbon, primary yan. How about this one? Ilang carbons yung katabi nito? Isa, dalawa. So, yan ay secondary alcohol. How about this one? Ilang carbon katabi niyan? Tatlo. Isa sa taas, isa dito, sa left, isa sa right. So, tertiary yan. Okay? So, ganun yung pag-check kung siya ay primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohols. Just look at the carbon atom to which they are attached. Tignan mo yan. Then, bilangin mo kung ilang yung katabi niyang carbons. No? Okay? So, bilangin mo ilang katabing carbon yan. Ganun din dito. And ganun din doon. Okay? Pag may isang katabing carbon, primary. Pag dalawa, secondary. Pag tatlo, tertiary. Ayan. So, recall lang yan. Okay, paalan muna tayo. Let's name them. Then mamaya, let's identify kung anong type ng alcohol siya. Okay, for letter A, uh, I have this one, this molecule here. So, ilang carbons kaya to? Start ako mag-count near, near dun sa aking OH. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that is a 5-carbon chain. Your OH is attached to the first carbon. So, ang pangalan niya ay 1-pentanol. So, yun yung name niya. 1-pentanol. O, letter B. So, Mo observe na sa letter B, we have two OHs na, dalawang OH. So bilangin mo yung mga carbons, 1 2 3. So on the first and on the third carbon ng propane, I have two OH na. So pangalan niya ay 1,3 propane diol. Ito yung propane, yung three carbons. Asan yung OH? So 1 and asa 3. So 1,3 dash propane. Then, since we have two OHS, we call it diol. Na? So, 1,3-propane diol. Well, letter C. Obviously, we'll start counting near sa OH. So, ito, 1, 2, 3, 4. On the first and on the second carbon ng butane, meron akong dalawang OH. So, Pangalan niya ay 1,2-butane-diol. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, on the first and on the second carbon, andun yung dalawang OH sa butane. Okay? So, ganun yung pag-interpret. Okay? O, let's have letter D. O, letter D isa yung OH, so yan ay tatanggalin mo yung isa dulo niyan. Okay? So, dito tayo mag-start. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So, on the first carbon, I have my OH. So, ang kanyang parent name ay 1-butanol. Tapos, may substituent pa ako, no? On the third carbon, I have my methyl group. So, ang pangalan niya ay 3-methyl-1-butanol. 
butanol. Okay, so ganun lang. Parang nagne-name lang tayo ng alkanes talaga. Uh, lastly, sasagutan ko i, kaya na bahala mamaya sa ibang items. Magko-call tayo ng tao. Okay, so for letter E, we have solid wedges. Dalawang solid wedge. So yan ay cis, no? So cis yan. And we also have diol, no? So diol yan, dalawang OH. Ngayon, lagyan mo ng low count yung diol. Nasaan sila? So carbons 1 and 2. So, ang kanyang complete name may cis 1, 2, cyclohexane diol. So, yan yung name ng ating molecule. Cis 1, 2, cyclohexane diol. Okay. So, ito 1, 2, cyclohexane diol. And cis yan kasi they are both pointing on the same side. Uh -huh. At the same side. No? Okay, so I'll give you uh, some time to answer these two, uh, uh, these four items, F, G, H, I. I need volunteers, no? Ito na yung last na recitation natin. So I need some volunteers to help me answering F, G, H, I, no? So please raise your hand na lang if you want to, uh, to answer. Uh, Kasi after ng discussion natin, next year na tayo magkikita-kita. No? Ganun talaga. Medyo sad pero medyo happy din. Kasi bakasyon na tayo. Bilis ng panahon. Imagine three months na lang March na uli. mag anniversary na yung, ano, yung lockdown. I, ha I need three, ano, four volunteers to help me answering items F, G, H, I. Okay, so we'll, we'll have Jenica, Trisha. So dito si Jenica sa F. Uh, sino pa ang mga matatapang na nila lang? <laughs> So, letter G, sino gusto mag-volunteer? Okay, so we have, we'll have Jan Gabriel. So, si Jan. Okay. Letter H. And I. No. Sir, kana ko letter G. Ah, letter G ka nga. Ito si Jenny ka, ito sa'yo. Ah. Ah, sino gusto sa H? Yung H, tricky yan. Pero bibigay ko na yung ano, structure niya. Okay, so sa letter H, ito ay naka. Ako na lang, sir, sa A. Sige. Sagutan mo na rin yung G. <laughs> Ay, ayaw mo ng G. Sige. Uh, so, dito na nanda si Jan Gabriel. <laughs> uh, dalawa. Masyadong matapang si Jan. <laughs> si Gabriel. Uh, so, say na yan yan. Uh, ito, letter G. Sino gusto magsagot? Uh, dali. Uh, 
ang liwanag ko ma- ng ang liwanag na mukha ko masyado. O letter G, sino gusto mag-volunteer? Laos. Ali, ako na lang. <laughs> Sige. So, ako na lang sa G. Sige. Uh, if you have answers na, no? So, kay Jenica and Jan Gabriel, pwede comment nyo na sa chat box natin. So, answeran ko na yung letter G. Okay? So, letter G, this is a cyclohexanol. Okay? So, ito, cy- cyclohexane to. It's may OH. So, cyclohexanol yan. On the first carbon, the very same carbon to which your OH is attached, no, mayroong methyl group ka doon. Okay, so may CH3 ka doon. So, ano pangalan yan? So, yan ay 1-methyl cyclohexanol. Okay, so letter G is 1-methyl cyclohexanol. So, may answer na rin si John Gabriel. Uh, letter H, third butanol, not sure. Third butanol, yan. Okay? At tama naman. Bakit, no? Anong ginagawa natin kapag condensed structural formula? Pag ganito, ginagawa natin line angle formula. So, drawing muna natin tong COH. So, ito yung COH. Then, dito sa carbon na to, may tatlong CH3s na nakadugtong dyan. Okay? So, draw natin yung tatlong CH3 na nakadugtong dyan. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Uh, ito yung paan ng manok, no? So, yan. So, third butanol yan. The other name for this is, ano? The other name is 2-methyl 2-propanol din. So, yan, yan yung other name niya. So, ito yung parent chain, no? Yan, yung 3 carbons na yan. So, ang isa pang name niya ay 2-methyl-2-propanol. Or pwede rin yung 3rd butanol. Okay? So, yan. So, may answer na si Jenica sa F. So, sa F, ito ay 2,6-dimethyl-cyclohexanol. Okay. So, this is 2,6-dimethyl- cyclohexanol. Okay? So, kahit hindi na natin isulat yung 1 no, for the cyclohexanol. Understood na na yung methyl ay nasa, ay yung OH nasa, nasa first carbon yan. Okay? So, ito yung first carbon. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No? So, on the second and on the sixth carbon and the new methyl group. So, you have 2, 6 dimethyl cyclohexanol. So, yeah, so good. And then, letter I, we have cyclopentanol. No? Okay, so, we have cyclopentanol here. So, kahit din na indicate yung 1, okay na yan. Okay? So, that's how you name alcohols. Still the same rules as alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. No? Same, same lang ng rules. No? Ang nadagdag lang sa atin ay yung all, no? Tapos kung kailan tatanggal niyo yung e, hindi, no? So, ganun lang. So, yun lang. Uh, ito naman. So, from the, uh, ako, ito, ako na lang magsagot na ito, no? Para mabilis tayo. So, I want you to, ano na lang, to observe, no? Paano tayo magdodrawing. So, Yung A, B, and G, hindi ko na sila binilugan kasi sila ay nasa PowerPoint na. No? So, hanapin nyo na lang yung structure nila. Okay. So, start ako sa C. So, for letter C, I have 2-methyl, 5-methyl uh, to hexanol. Okay. So, I will have to draw first my parent chain, yung 2-hexanol. So, gawa ka ng hexane. And the second carbon, and then yung OH. Then, you draw your substituent, 5-methyl. 
on the fifth carbon and the new methyl. So, well, ito yung itsura ng uh, 5-methyl 2-hexanol. Sabay kayo habang nagsasagot ako. Ha? Okay. So, letter D, I have here 2-methyl 2-propyl 1,3-propane diol. So, I have to draw my parent chain first, which always comes last, no? Draw natin propane, okay? Yan. 1,3-propane diol yan. On the second carbon, may methyl ako and mayroon akong propyl. So, guys, mura ng molecule natin. Oh, letter E, 1-octanol. 1-octanol. Oh, 8 carbons lang yan. This the first carbon and then yung OH. Na? So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On the first carbon and then yung OH. So, that is 1-octanol. Letter F, we have 3-3-dimethyl cyclohexanol. So, you have to draw cyclohexanol first. Okay. So, this is our cyclohexanol. On the third carbon, you have two methyl groups. No? So, that's 3,3-dimethyl cyclohexanol. Now, letter H. 1,4-butane diol. A drawing mo muna yan. Butane, four carbons. On the first and on the fourth carbon, may OH ka. So, this is how 1,4-butane diol looks like. Na. Now, number five, we have 5-methyl 1-hexanol. Drawing mo muna, hexanol, six carbons yan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On the first carbon, andun yung OH. And on the fifth carbon, andun yung methyl. And lastly, letter J, we have trans 1,4-cyclohexane diol. So we have a diol. So you draw your cyclohexane muna. So trans, ibig sabihin, yung isa pointing upwards, yung isa pointing downwards na. So ito na lang yung pointing upwards ko. So dito yung pointing downwards. So that's my trans 1,4-cyclohexane diol. So that's how you draw uh, alcohols. No? You still follow the rules uh, given from uh, yung discussion natin ng alkanes. No? Alkanes, alkanes, alkynes. Same rule applies here. No? So yan. That's it, no? Uh, next one, we have the physical properties of alcohols, no? Uh, malapit na tayo sa dulo. So, ano yung alam natin sa alcohol? Alcohols have an OH substituent, no? Meron siyang hydroxyl substituent. And kung maalala nyo yung discussion natin sa Lewis structures, Yung OH bond ay polar bond. No? So, polar yan because of the electronegativity difference. No? So, the difference is greater than 0 0.4. So, that means it is a polar bond. No? So, that polar bond makes the alcohol itself a polar molecule. No? So, yung polarity ng CO and yung OH bond na yun, that makes the entire molecule polar. Okay? And, ano pa alam natin? Yung OH. Ano yung ginagawa ng OH? It can perform hydrogen bonding. No? Hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force of attraction. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, if we are going to compare our alkanes with alcohols, we should observe higher properties, higher physical properties for alcohols as compared to your alkanes. No? So, for example, dito sa table natin, we have here the, uh, the alkanes and their corresponding alcohols. No? 
And tignan nyo yung boiling point na. So, let's consider ethane and ethanol. Look, no? So, si ethane, its boiling point is negative 89 degrees Celsius. But for ethanol, that's 78 degrees Celsius, na. No? Ano yung difference? Yung ethane ay walang OH, na. No? Yung ethanol may OH. So, that should give you an idea na yung presence ng OH itself, yung substituent na yun, that would make your molecule much more stronger, no? Much more tied together, no? So, ano yung idea sa mga boiling point, na? No? If your molecules aren't holding tight together, hindi sila sama-sama, mag-boil mag off agad sila. However, due to hydrogen bonding, lumalakas yung ano, join, joining force sa kanila, no? nagkakapit-kapit sila. So, they will not boil off easily. No? So, sa lecture yan, chapter 5. Okay, so ganun. Then, yun. Ano ba meron sa ethane? Kung titignan nyo yung molecule ng ethane, CH3, CH3. So, ayan ay kaya lang gumawa niyan ng London Dispersion Forces. When we say London dispersion forces, these are forces of attraction that is dominant for, ano, for nonpolar molecules. No? So, kapag nonpolar yung molecule mo, LDF lang kaya gawin yan. And that is the weakest uh, forces of attraction in the universe. No? So, yun yung isa sa mga weakest force of attraction for molecules. No? Pero kapag yan ay may H bond, for example, alcohols, no, lumalakas yung kapit nila. No? So, nagdidikit-dikit sila. Okay, so ganun. Um, what also can we observe dito? Ano pa ba pwede natin ma-observe? Ito, observe natin yung alcohol series natin. So, we begin from methanol to ethanol, propanol, and butanol. And check nyo yung kanilang corresponding boiling points. No? So, the fact na may OH would make your boiling point higher than the, alki the alkane counterparts. No? Tapos, ano pa nababansin natin? As we grow our carbon chain, kapag gumahaba yung carbon chain natin, ano nangyayari? Mas lalong tumataas yung boiling point. No? Bakit? Kasi, dalawa na yung Ano, nag, ano, dalawa na yung factor kung bakit tumataas lalo yung boiling point. Number one is the hydrogen bonding. The other is the increased LDF. No? Ang London dispersion forces, basta maraming atom, lumalakas yan. No? So, pag pinagsama mo yung maraming atom plus yung OH, mataas na mataas yung boiling point yan. No? So, for this case, yung butanol, it has a higher boiling point compared to your methane. No? So, yan. Methanol. No? So, yan. Uh, basta tumadami yung atoms, tumataas ang LDF. No? So, mas lalong tataas lal ang boiling point. No? Uh, however, may catch yan. No? So, hindi lahat ng mukhang okay ay okay talaga. Bakit? If you check the solubility of our alcohols in water, okay, so, for methanol, ethanol, and propanol, their solubility is infinite. No? So, ibig sabihin, magmimix sila regardless of how much, ano, how much alcohol you add no, sa tubig. Maghahalo talaga yan ang maghahalo. No? Pero, look at butanol. So, for butanol, may limit na. Only 8 grams of butanol will be dissolved in 100 gram uh, water sa uh, container mo. No? So, ganun. 8 grams lang yung mamimix over the 100. Uh, 100 grams of your alcohol. Uh, of your water, rather. No? So, ganun. Kapag gumahaba na kasi yung carbon chain natin, nagiging mas dominant na yung London forces. Yung non-polar forces. No? Nagkakaroon ka dito ng long chain ng nonpolar carbons. No? So, as a result, nagiging nonpolar na yung molecule natin. Pero kapag maliit lang yan, polar yan. Pero kapag gumahaba na yung carbon chain, nagiging nonpolar na siya. 
Okay, so yun lang. Punta na tayo sa reactions, no? So ito na yung last part ng ating discussion for this day. So, reactions tayo. Last time we were able to discuss phenols and nasa quiz nyo to, no? So yung phenols natin, uh, they react with bases to form phenoxide salt, uh, phenoxide anion. And because of the resonance of benzene, no? of the ring, benzene ring, because of its resonance, phenols can behave like an acid. No? So, pwede siya mag-behave as an acid. No? So, pwede siya mag-undergo ng acid-base reaction. Bakit? Because of the resonance ng benzene ring. It makes the anion stable. Okay? So, the resonance makes your phenoxide stable. Pero kapag yan ay alcohol, hindi yan magbe-behave like phenols. Yes, pareha silang alcohol. But the difference is that walang resonance sa alcohols, no? Compare that to phenols. For example, you observe your, ano, your isopropanol, no? Yung 2-propanol nyo. Pag in-spray nyo yan sa balat, hindi naman nasusunog yan, no? Maliba na lang kung lagay mo yan sa sugat, masakit talaga yan. Pero hindi yan magsusunog ng balat, no? Hindi yan mag, ano, uusok, hindi yan maingitim, no? So, wala lang. Parang naglagay ka lang ng tubig. Yun. Parang naglagay ka lang ng tubig sa kamay mo na malamig, no? Okay? Bakit? Kasi nga, yung alcohols, they are not as acidic as phenols because they lack the resonance structure, no? Wala silang resonance, kaya ano sila? Uh, hindi sila reactive, no? So, yan. So, we can say that alcohols are weaker than phenols and does not react with, uh, with bases, no? Hindi sila nag-react with bases masyado. Okay? And that makes our alcohols to have the same pH as that of the water, no? So, same-same lang sila ng pH. Okay, so ngayon, punta na tayo sa reactions ng alcohol, no? Marami yan actually, no? Hindi pa ako tapos na ito mag-discuss sa aking tutorial ng organic chemistry. Um, yun talaga, pure organic chemistry yun. No? So, isang buong chapter ng libro, ano namin, dinidiscuss talaga. No? Okay, cover to cover yun. Pero sa case natin, basics lang tayo. No? So, ito, let's have the dehydration reaction. Okay, so if you have an alcohol, if you dehydrate it, you can produce an alkene. Okay? So, ano meaning ng dehydration? Uh, from the word D, may ibig sabihin matatanggal. Hydration, tubig. Matatanggal ang tubig sa alcohol. Okay? So, remember your alcohol has an OH group, no? Pwede yung kumuha pa ng isang hydrogen sa iyong molecule para makabuo ng water. Okay? So, yun. Ito yung mga matatanggal sa alcohol molecule mo. Yung hydrogen and yung hydroxyl functional group ng alcohol. Okay? So, kapag natanggal yung mga yan, ano matitira? Magkakaroon ka ng alkene. Okay? So, alkene ang mabubuo natin. Ano yung mga reagents na kailangan to carry out this reaction? So, the reagents that are needed na, to carry out this reaction are the following. So, we have to have heat. No? Kailangan mainit yung uh, Mainit yung, mainit yung yung reaction chamber. Kasi kapag di yung mainit, di mangyayari yung reaction. No? Plus, you should also have concentrated acids. No? So, phosphoric acid yon or sulfuric acid. No? Pero most of the time, sulfuric acid. No? Kasi mura lang. And then, depending on the type of your carbon, of your alcohol rather, no? depending on the type of your alcohol, and uh, yung bilis ng reaction na. So, with that, you can differentiate the primary alcohol uh, with the secondary alcohol and with the tertiary alcohol. So, pwede mo sila ma-differentiate na depending sa bilis ng reaction. Ang primary alcohol, they do not readily react no, with acids sa dehydration process. So, in short, matagal to bago matapos. Ang secondary and yung tertiary alcohol, sila yung mabibilis matapos ang reaction. Na. So, yan. 
So depending on the time it takes until the reaction is complete, you can differentiate the three, I know, the three types of alcohol now. So yeah. So here are some examples. Uh, we have more panaman later. Okay, so for example, we have an ethanol. If we react that with concentrated sulfuric acid in the presence of heat, you will form ethylene. Okay. So na mangyari dito. Yung H, OH, burahin mo. Yung isang H ng katabi niya, di ba ito yung carbon na dinulugtungan ng ano, OH. Yung katabi nun, kunan mo ng isang H din. Okay? So, you will be left with CH2, CH2, or acetylene. So, in between them, magkakaroon tayo ng double bond. So, ano uli na tatanggal dito? OH pati H, no? So, mapupunta sa product side yung water ninyo. So, another example is this one, cyclohexanol. So, ito yung carbon to which your OH is attached. Saan siya kukuha ng hydrogen para matanggal yung OH? Kuha yan sa katabi niya. Pwede dito sa taas, pwede dito sa gilid. No? Kunwari dito sa baba. Itong H, kukunin niya. So, mawawala yung OH, mawawala din yung H, and in between those carbons, magkakaroon ka ng double bond. So, you will have your cyclohexene and water product. So, ganun din dito. So, suppose you have the third butanol, third butyl alcohol. So, matatanggal yung H. No? Tapos, saan manghihingi ng hydrogen yung carbon na to? Any of the three, pare-parehas yung CH3. O, kunwari dito sa right side, no? sabi niya, uy, penge baon. Ah, binigyan niya siya ng isang hydrogen. So, ang mangyayari doon is that kapag nawalan na to ng H, magiging double bond na to. So, magiging double bond na yan. Okay? So, you will have your 2-methyl propene. Okay? Or isobutylene. So, ganun lang. Again, sa nangihingi ng hydrogen, yung carbon na katabi ng carbon na may OH na. Doon tayo nangihingi ng hydrogen. Tapos doon din tayo magkakaroon ng double bond. Uh, ano pa yung alam natin? Yung ating ano, uh, dehydration reaction that also gives us uh, multiple products. Kasi marami siyang option kung saan siya pwede manghingi ng hydrogen to create the double bonds. No? For example, we have the butanol. This is the carbon na, naka, na dinudugtungan ng OH nyo. So, if, if it undergoes dehydration reaction, pwede dito siya manghingi sa kaliwa ng hydrogen. Okay? So, pwede siya manghingi dito ng hydrogen sa kabila, sa left side. So, andito yung double bond. So, that's your product, 2-butene. Again, dito nakadugtong yung OH. Pwede rin naman sa right side siya manghingi ng hydrogen. So, that means, ang double bond na sa right side. So, you will have your 1-butene. You can actually predict kung sino yung major product, sino yung minor product, pero wag na natin gawin na for simplicity. So, there are many factors to be included. Number one is the, ano, is the, uh, subset, ano, yung dami ng substituents ng inyong alkin, no? So, nagpiplay ng factor. Pero, okay na yan. Basta alam natin kung saan pupunta yung double bond. We're good, no? Pwedeng sa left, pwedeng sa right. So, we have this one. Here, we have methyl, methyl butanol. So, dito yung carbon na dudug, dinudugtungan ng OH. So, saan pwede yung manghingi ng hydrogen? Pwede dito. So, kapag dito yan ang hingi ng hydrogen, andito yung double bond, such as shown here. Okay? Ina-underline ko yung original position ng OH na. So, pag, pag dito yan sa left ng hingi ng hydrogen, dito yung double bond mag -e exist Okay? So, andun yung double bond. Pag yan sa right side ng hingi ng hydrogen, so, dun mapupunta yung double bond sa right side na. Okay? So, ganun lang. And ano pa yung alam natin, no? Na since related itong discussion natin with alkenes, no? May makikita tayong connection. Bakit? 
Kasi alam natin na yung alkin kapag nilagyan mo ng water and acid, no? Acid catalyzed hydration of your alkin will give you alcohol uh, via Markovnikov addition. Pero kapag yung alcohol dinehydrate natin, binuhusan natin ng so- sobrang daming acid, it will give us an alkin. So that means the reaction is in equilibrium, no? So ibig sabihin, pwedeng mag vice versa yung ating molecules, no? Depending on the amounts of your reagent, no? So pwede yung alkin maging alcohol kapag sobrang daming water. Pwede rin naman yung alcohol maging alkin kapag sobrang daming acid, no? So more of more of an equilibrium reactions will be discussed sa ano sa inyong analytical chemistry no yung mga lasyate yung principle no etc etc next sem na yan pero yung idea no na related yung re- reaction natin sa alkin and sa alcohol no parehas silang uh, parehas sila ng equation halos no okay balang nan direction next one we have this is the last one pala so we have the oxidation reaction of our alcohol So depending on the type of your alcohol, you can have different products, no? So if your alcohol is a primary alcohol, it will give you an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid, pwedeng end, no? So mangyayari doon is that you have to use an oxidizing agent. For this case, we will use potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7, in sulfuric acid solution. So ito lang yung reagent na kailangan natin dyan. So, ang ating alcohol, pag nireact yan with potassium dichromate in the presence of sulfuric acid, mangyayari is that from OH, magiging aldehyde yan, C double bond OH. Pwede rin yan maging carboxylic acid, C double bond O, OH na. So, from alcohol, you can form two products. You can have an aldehyde, pwede rin carboxylic acid. If that's a primary alcohol. Pag yan ay secondary alcohol, ang secondary alcohol, the oxidation of the secondary alcohol will only give you ketones. No? So, ano yung ketone? Yun yung C double bond O lang. Okay? So, primary, ano yung nabibigay? Aldehyde and keto, uh, aldehyde and carboxylic acid. Pag secondary, it will give you ketones. No? Ang tertiary, they do not react with oxidizing agents na. So, hindi sila nagre-react. So, ayun lang. And that ends our reactions na. So, tapos na tayo sa lahat ng reaction needed for org chem. Ngayon, to end this day, magsagot-sagot na lang tayo ng sample problems pa. Okay? Then, we'll end with, ay, ba't may sagot? Nakikita nyo na yung sagot. Burahin ko. Oh, wala na kayo nakikita. And we will end our discussion with this ano, summative ano, uh, problem. No? So, andito na lahat no, ng reactions na na-discuss natin. Almost lahat. No? So, ayan. Uh, ayan, buti na bura ka dito. Okay? So, let's try to do this. No? Do the following. So, let's have here letter A. I have one butanol. If I react that with my sulfuric acid, ano yung mangyayari? By the way, yung triangle, ibig sabihin niyan ay heat. No? Iniinit mo yung reaction. So, kapag ang reagent mo ay sulfuric acid with heat, anong reaction yan? Dehydration yan. So, magkakaroon ka ng double bond. Pag ang reagent mo ay K2Cr2O7, potassium dichromate, in the presence of sulfuric acid catalyst, that will give you oxidation products no sagutan muna natin lahat ng blue lahat ng dehydration so ano mangyayari dito uh, sa ating 1 butanol if we dehydrate that magkakaroon tayo ng double bond ang tanong saan sabi natin yung carbon na dinudugtungan ng OH magkaka double bond yan sa neighboring uh, carbon niya no So, isa lang naman yung carbon na katabi niya, no? Ito lang. So, ibig sabihin, the double bond will be located here, dito banda, no? So, dun lang yung double bond, hindi sa kung saan pa man. 
So, this will be the product of the dehydration reaction. Buburahin nyo yung OH, ilagay nyo yung double bond kung saan pwede. Ganun lang. So, again, paano? Ito yung OH, dito yung carbon na dinudugtungan ng OH. So, kapag yan ay dinihydrate mo, magkakaroon ng double bond yan. Saan? Sa katabi na carbon na to. Pwede dito. Ito lang naman yung katabi niyang carbon. So, dito lang pwede yung double bond. No? So, you, we will have this molecule here. 1-butene. Uh, next one, we have this one. Uh, we have 1-4-butene diol. No? So, we have 1-4-butene diol. We will dehydrate it. So, kapag dinihydrate natin yung diols, magiging dalawang alkene yan. Ang tanong, saan yung double bond? So, ito yung carbon na to. Saan yung makakagawa ng double bond? Dito lang. Itong carbon na to, saan itong makakagawa ng double bond? Dito lang din. Okay? So, ang itsura niyan, ganito. So, ito yung itsura ng molecule natin. So, we will have 1,3-butadiene. Uh, okay? So, itong OH, pag nawala yan, nandito yung double bond. Ito yun. Itong OH, pag nawala yan, magkakaroon tayo ng double bond dito lang. So, ganun lang. Yun na yun. Basta alamin nyo kung saan pwede maglagay ng double bond. Goods na kayo. Buburahin nyo na lang yung OH. Letter D. Ah, sabi natin, matatanggal yung OH. No? Anong mangyayari sa OH? Magiging double bond. Pero check natin. Pag itong OH, tinanggal ko, magkaroon ako ng double bond dito. Is this molecule possible? Possible ba yan? Uh, ano sagot nyo? Ang sagot ko ay, hindi yan possible. Bakit? Kasi, ang carbon, ilang bonds kaya niyan gawin? Apat lang. Ilang bonds na yung meron dyan? Bilangin natin. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima. So, we already have five bonds to this carbon. Hindi pwede yun. No? Bawal yun, kapatid. No? So, no reaction tayo dito. Kapag lalagpas sa apat na bonds yung mangyayari kapag nagagay kayo ng double bond, hindi na pwede yan. Okay? So, no reaction yun. So, wala tayong dehydrate, uh, dehydration product dito. Kapag lalagpas sa apat na bonds yung carbon, bawal na bawal, iyon. Well, let's have this one. We have 3,3-dimethyl uh, cyclo um, hexanol. So, kapag tayo, dinihydrate natin yan, saan pwede yung double bond? Sa katabi ng carbon na dinudugtungan ng OH. E, dalawa katabi niyang carbon. Meron sa left side, meron sa right side. So, saan yung ano? Saan yung double bond? E, ditig isa, no? Merong double bond na nasa left side. Okay. May ganyan tayo. And meron din tayong double bond na nasa right side. No? Yan. May ganyan din tayong products. Ay, wait lang. So, ganun lang. So, ang position ng double bonds, kung kaya dalawang molecules magawa mo, edo dalawa ito drawing mo. Pwedeng nasa left side, pwedeng nasa right side yung double bond. No? So, ganun lang. Well, let's have this one. Ah, pag natanggal yung OH, saan pwede maglagay ng double bond? Sino yung katabi nito? Ito, pati ayon. Ito, pati ayon. So, edi dalawa yung products na magagawa natin. So, we can have that molecule. Pwede rin ganito. Okay. So, ito, kapag sa left side yung double bond, ito yon. Pag sa right side yung double bond, ito yon. 
Okay, so ganun. Dalawa yung products natin. Lastly, we have this one. We have this molecule. Again, ay dinihydrate mo. sa yung double bond? Pwede dito sa left, pwede rin sa right. No? So, draw natin yan. So, ito yung sa left. Okay. Tapos, ito yung sa right. Okay. So, ganun lang. Basta alamin nyo lang saan pwede maglagay ng double bond. No? So, pwede dito. Ayun yun. Burahin nyo lang yung OH. Tapos, pwede rin dito. Hindi pwede kahit saan ha. Kailangan doon lang sa katabi ng OH. Hindi pwede kung saan saan yun na nilalagay. Huwag ganun. Uh, baka magulat yung molecule. No? So, yan. Okay na yan. So, this is how you determine the dehydration products. No? Ngayon naman, paano yung oxidation products? Again, you identify the type of alcohol that you have. No? So, pwede natin malaman kung primary, secondary, or tertiary yan. If you have a primary alcohol, if you react that with potassium dichromate in the presence of sulfuric acid catalyst, no? it will give you an aldehyde product, pwede carboxylic product, okay? So, suppose we have here one butane, so that is a primary alcohol. So, yung OH natin nakadugtong sa carbon na to. Ilang carbon yung katabi na ito? Isa lang. So, this is a primary alcohol. So, that means we can produce, ano, we can produce aldehydes and carboxylic acid here. Pwede tayo mag-produce ng aldehyde and carboxylic acid. Ang uh, natura nun, uh, ganito. Yan yung aldehyde, ito yung carboxylic acid. Okay? So, ito yung aldehyde, C double bond OH. Ito yung carboxylic acid, C double bond OOH. Paano nyo magagawa yan? No? Paano yung technique dyan? Ganito. Burahin nyo yung H. Palitan nyo ng double bond. Aldehyde na yan. Ganun lang. O, tapos, kunwari gusto mo ng carboxylic acid. Yung double bond, dugtungan mo ng OH. Yung carboxylic acid na yan. So, yun lang yung mga tricks, no? Diyan. So, basically, you begin with your alcohol. Burahin mo yung H. Palitan mo ng double bond. Aldehyde yan. Dugtungan mo yan ng OH pa. Yan ay carboxylic acid, no? As i-rotate mo na lang yung molecule to come up with this drawing here. So, ganun lang. So, dalawa yung products natin. How about this one? So, both of the carbons, uh, both of the alcohols here are primary alcohols na. So, ibig sabihin yan, we can produce aldehydes and carboxylic acid na at the same time. So, natura ng aldehyde natin. So, ganito yan. So, ito yung itsura ng aldehyde natin. Ito naman yung itsura ng carboxylic acid natin. Okay? So, ganun. Ah, paano ako nakakuha ng ganyang result? Ganito lang. Sabi ko, burahin yung H. Lagyan ng double bond. Aldehyde na. O, dugtungan mo yan ng OH. Yan ay carboxylic acid na. O, easy lang. Ganun lang gagawin niya. Yan lang yung mga tricks dito. O, nabura yung entire molecule. O, let's have letter D. Uh, so, primary alcohol pa rin yan, no? So, this... Yeah, so, primary alcohol yan. So, ano yung mga pwede natin mabuo dito? We can have aldehydes. So, gawin natin aldehyde yan. Teka lang. Ayusin natin yung drawing. So, yan. So, aldehyde yan. And pwede rin yan maging carboxylic acid. No? So, 
Sa ganun. So, ganun lang. Um, burahin mo lang yung H, lagyan mo ng double bond. Ito yun. So, yung double bond, dugtungan mo ng OH. Ito yun, carboxylic acid yun. Okay. So, ganun lang. Again, lagyan mo lang yan ng double bond, aldehyde yan. Lagyan mo ng OH pa, carboxylic acid na yan. Um, inayos ko lang yung drawing ko. No? Kaya ganyan. Well, let's have this one. Uh, Oxidize daw natin yan. So, that is a secondary alcohol. Bakit? This carbon has two neighboring carbon atoms. No? So, ito ay secondary alcohol. So, ano mapoproduce dyan? Ketone lang. So, ketone lang. So, paano ketone? Double bond O lang yan. Okay? So, paano technique? Ganito. Burahin yung H. Lagyan ng double bond. Ketone na yan. So, ganun lang yung shortcut dyan. Of course, may proper mechanism yan, pero di na natin gagawin yung mechanism kasi super daming arrows nun. Daming arrow pushing sequence yan. So, okay na tayo sa ganito lang. Kasi nung nag-board exam kami, ganito lang din ginawa namin. Kailangan kabisado mo lang kung ano yung mga magiging products. No? Uh, let's have this one. This is also a secondary alcohol. No? So, basically... Just copy the carbon chain and gawin mo lang double bond yung sa oxygen. So, this is your product, ketone. And then, ito rin, ganun din gagawin natin dyan, no? So, magiging ketone lang din yan. Okay? So, those are the answers for uh, the items here. Nagdagdag lang ako. So, yan. So, kapag magre-review kayo, pwede panoorin nyo ito sa YouTube. Tapos, post nyo yung part na ito. No? So, ganun. Basta yan lang. Uh, alamin nyo lang kung siya ay primary. It will give you aldehyde and carboxylic acid. Pag yan ay secondary, it will give you ketones. No? Pag tertiary yan, walang reaction. Okay. So, walang mangyayari. So, to end our class, no? to formally end our class, uh, start tayo mag karoon ng integrated problems dito. So, integrated problem to kasi meron siyang alkane, may alkene, and may alcohols. No? Reactions nilang lahat. No? So, sabi dito, we start with this alcohol. This is one propanol. Sundin natin yung sequence. So, A. So, I started from here. Naging alkene siya. Anong reagent kailangan doon? O kakasabi lang natin. If you want to dehydrate your alcohol into an alkene, kailangan mo na sulfuric acid with heat. No? So, yan yung reagent na kailangan mo dyan. Ngayon, um, you have an alkene. O, sunod natin to, letter B. So, from alkene, you have an alcohol again. This time, Marconic of yung ating alcohol. No? Yung OH ay kumabit sa mo most substituted carbon. No? So, Marconic of addition yan. O, anong reagent yan? Ang process na to ay tinatawag nating acid catalyzed hydration of alkene. So, you need H2O and H+. Okay, so kailangan mo yan. Sana naalala nyo pa yung reactions. No? Ito yung summary. So, from, ano, from alcohol, naging ano siya? Ketone. So, ano kailangan doon? From al alcohol, magiging ketone. Okay, kakadiscuss lang natin yan. K2Cr2O7 H2SO4. So, tapos na. Uh, balik ulit tayo dito, from alkene, letter D, ito. From here, nagkaroon ng isang BR. Anong reaction yan? That's hydro boring, uh, hydro halogenation. So, you add hydrogen and your halogen, HBR yan. So, that is also Markovnikov addition. Uh, next one, dito tayo sa E. Ano nangyari? Nadagdagan tayo ng dalawang halogens. So, yan ay halogenation. No? So, BR2 ang idadagdag natin dyan. Ito naman, from alkene, naging alkane, tawag dyan ay catalytic hydrogenation. 
So you need you need to use hydrogen gas with metal catalyst such as platinum. Okay? Then balik ulit tayo sa alcohol. Okay, so from alcohol magiging aldehyde. Anong reagent 'yan? Yan ay K2 uh, Cr2O7 with sulfuric acid. Okay, oxidation ng alcohol 'yan. From ano, from aldehyde magiging carboxylic acid. Ano kailangan? K2Cr2O7 pa rin with H2SO4. Uh, from alcohol to carboxylic acid, ano pa yung kailangan? Still the same. No? So, ulit-ulit lang. K2Cr2O7 with sulfuric acid. No? So, ganun. So, ito yung proof na yung organic chemistry. They are inter- related no connected sila sa isa't isa no so yung mga topics na nung discuss natin sa alkanes sa alkenes yung reactions na yon pwede yung ma-extend no so that's why ang ating body ang kanyang language ay organic chemistry no so our body does ano reactions like this no to allow us no na magkaroon ng mga enzymes no that will speed up the reactions sa body natin na gagawa din siya ng molecules that can kill bacteria, no? uh, bacteria, pathogens, no? and ganon. So, super complicated ang life, pero by understanding org chem, basta alam nyo lang yung mga steps, yung mga tawag sa reactions, pwede ka makagawa ng sandamukal na molecules. No? Uh, so, that ends our semester. Ano? So, tapos na ako sa aking discussion. Okay na tayo dito. So, we will no longer have any meeting meetings after this na. Wala na tayong meeting. Uh, ano na lang kailangan ninyo gawin? Nagsasagot na lang kayo ng quizzes. So, sagot na lang kayo ng quiz. Then, yung exam. No? So, yung examination again, sa December 10 mag-open yan. And magkuklose yan by December 16. No? Pwede rin naman ma-extend to 19. No? Hanggang 19 lang naman yung SEM natin. Okay, so with that, no, so thank you for uh, attending my sessions, no. So yun, um, so I hope na safe kayo and I'll see you again next year, no. Kung kayo pa rin mga students ko, no? So stay safe and aral well, no. So upload ko to sa YouTube, no. So dun yun na lang uli ako mapapanood. So thank you and let's have dinner na. Okay, so salamat po and bye-bye. Ito lang. Stop ko yung recording. Uh, bye, -bye po and kita-kita na lang.